Welcome to the Rope Access channel. My name is Alex and today we will continue with the gear series. In the previous videos we talked about the harness, the descender, the backup devices and the ascenders. Even touched on the cowtails for a little bit. In this video we'll be talking about the one thing that connects us all to the different devices and that's the carabiners. Let's get into it. So, carabiners. There are a lot of different carabiner types, forms and shapes. But let's start with a, a very important main difference, and that's steel versus aluminum. What's the big difference? If we're talking about weight, we prefer aluminum because they weigh a lot less. But if we're talking about price, well, steel is a lot cheaper than aluminum. Another big difference is in some environments, aluminum carabiners are not allowed. If we're talking about explosive environments, called EX zones, then usually we only work with steel carabiners. Also, when we are approaching the braking strength of a carabiner in certain situations where, where it's unforeseen, uh, testing that has shown that steel tends to bend a bit before it breaks, while aluminum carabiners tend to snap, basically. So there's no clear signal. If you're approaching those areas of forces being generated, you're already making mistakes and uh, overloading systems, so it should not be an issue. But if it happens, then this might give you a little bit of a signal that you're making an error somewhere in your system. So closing mechanisms. Right now I have two steel carabiners in an oval shape. They're good in pulleys and basically the, the, the most common ones in the rope access industry. This one has a, a screwing mechanism to lock it so it doesn't open anymore. And this one has a triact. And triact means that you need three movements to open it. All right, one is I push the closing mechanism up and then I twist it and then I can open it. So it's very safe and when you let it go, it's locked automatically. That said, you always have to check your carabiner and you do that by squeezing it. Because if the, this gets dirty, then sometimes it might close but not lock. So you always have to check it if it's closed. You also have carabiners that have only a twisting motion, so you don't need to push the up or down, and on the way I'm showing it now, the sideways one, but just the twisting. And then there are the ones that have no, just we, what we call the snappers, okay? The snappers, they, they just open close. It's good for putting gear on or a seat, but not for your personal safety. That's in a rope access world, in the climbing and the alpine climbing world, that's different. But we're talking about the professional climbing environment. These are only good to attach gear to, or maybe this personal seat you're sitting on. And while I'm holding this one, you see that there's a pulley integrated into it. So that's kind of a, a special carabiner with a special function. We'll get on into these kind of carabiners in later videos. And then let's talk about shapes a little bit. There's the basic oval ones, but also what we call the HMS, carabiners, carabiners. They're bigger ones, you can put more stuff in it. Sometimes they're stronger, sometimes not. The, 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 if you put bigger slings in it, it looks more neat, but actually they might be overloaded more easy if we're talking about a three-way loading direction. Most carabiners are only made to be loaded in a lengthways. Uh, let's do it like this, like this, in a straight pull along the, on the, along the spine of the carabiner. With the white carabiners like this, it, sometimes it might happen that the load ends up here and then you're actually almost cross-loading it. So take care that when you load the carabiner that you're always loading it along the, along the spine of the axis, like this. This also happens, especially with uh, the one uh, carabiner attaching your descender to your harness, that with moving up and down or changing from ascending to descending or descending to ascending, that the carabiner gets flipped around and then suddenly you're loading it like this. When cross-loading the carabiner, you're decreasing the strength of the carabiner by 
about a third of the strength, of the minimum braking strength. So that's pretty big. So always take care, load it along the spine of the axis of the carabiner. Which carabiner you use, it's totally up to you or your employer or the work site you're working at. If I'm working in a certain environment, they might say, oh, we only want steel carabiners or we only want aluminum carabiners. For most part, it's up to you. Some people prefer to go all aluminum, some prefer all steel. Shape of the carabiner, also, it's totally up to you. Some pulleys specify that you need to use an oval carabiner. Like I said, it's up to you what you connect yourself with. Talking about connecting, if you like this content, if you like these videos, please help the channel out. Hit that like, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment about about what you would like to see in another video. Maybe certain carabiners or certain types of tests or a certain move. Let me know what you think about this. All right, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next time. Stay connected, peace out.